Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, something a little different with the geometric table runner. Well, I thought I would try something a little different on this week's show. In fact, it's kind of a crafty thing more than it is a real woodworking thing, but it is made from wood. So I think what we're going to start with today is some maple and we're going to be taking some scrap pieces out of the rack. So this is a great project to use up your scrap. Let's get some maple and take it over to the bench. Well, what these are, are the end slabs from when you're milling rough cut stock. You always end up with a slab at the end that is really misshapen and oddly dimensioned. It really is, sometimes it's thicker at the one end and, and much thinner at the other, and or it's wavy. Like, you never know what these end cuts are going to be. But what I've done is I've taken all of them and they would normally be pretty much useless, but I've planed them all down to 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. So what I need to do is I need to joint one edge to give me a flat reference. And for that, believe it or not, we're going to use the table saw. Well, in order to cut the one perfectly straight edge on a board that is so irregular on the table saw, is I'm going to be using my grippers and all I'm going to do, and this works great for small pieces like this, we're going to line up our board so it's pretty much parallel with our blade. And then we're going to place our grippers down, tight up against the fence, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply pressure both down and in towards the fence and we're going to run it through and take off this edge. And essentially what we're doing here is we're using the flat edge of the grippers as our straight edge on this side in order to trim this side off parallel to the fence. Well, now that you have the wood flattened on the one edge, we need to cut them into strips. And we're gonna cut them into three inch wide strips. And then from there, we're going to cut three inch squares from those three inch strips. For my project today, I am going to be using 21 of those squares, but you can adjust it for whatever size of table runner you want to make. Well, now that you have your 21 squares cut out, you want to put them in a configuration of three wide by seven long. Now, this of course is your chance to arrange them in any way that you want. This is where you can get a little creative. You can see that they're different colors here not all wood is exactly the same color. So you can mix and match here and kind of try to make a pattern if you like, or just make it random like what I'm doing here. I'm also going to alternate my grains. Now you don't have to, it doesn't have anything to do with strength. For me, it's just to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. Now, once you get them laid out in the configuration or the pattern or whatever you want to call it that you like, it's time to mark them. We're going to need to do some drilling in these pieces. So we want to mark the sides of our stock that we're going to be drilling. And what I mean by that is not which one of these sides, but these edges. So ignoring the entire outer perimeter, you want to just put a mark to identify what edges are going to require holes. And the way that you're going to do this is, like I said, ignoring the outer perimeter, any boards that touch will be getting holes drilled in them.
I have a 1 8 inch diameter bit installed in the drill press and I've set a stop on my fence and set my fence so that on each one of our edges here, we are going to drill this 1 8 diameter through hole it's centered on our three inches and one quarter of an inch back from the edge. Now I would suggest doing one tile at a time and then taking it back over to your layout and making sure that it's all proper in the right configuration. If you mistakenly drill a side at the beginning of the process, you can always correct that down the road by swapping out a couple pieces. So you do have a little bit of a margin for error here, but try your best to only drill on the sides that you marked. Well, if you've been following along, you should have something that looks like this. And I don't know if you caught it or not, but at one point I made the mistake at the beginning and even though I had those pencil marks on there, I still managed to drill one piece wrong. But it was at the beginning of the drilling process, so I was able to match up grain alignment and swap it out with one of the other pieces. You have that luxury at the beginning of the drilling process you start to lose it the further you go along. So just be careful with what you drill. Okay, so now what we want to do is take every one of those 21 pieces and give it a thorough sanding. Take off all of those sharp, crisp edges, sand the surfaces down to 220 grit, and then when you're done that, come back and see me. Well, now that the sanding is done, you want to put your pieces aside, clean all the dust off of them, and then you're going to apply a finish to all of the pieces. I'm going to go with most likely a Danish oil, and then when that dries, I'm going to give it a couple coats of satin finished varnish. And uh, I think that will finish it off just nice. So do all your finishing, get all your pieces finished, and then we can move on to the next step. Well, truth be told, it has been a week since I last visited this project and I've applied three coats of a semi-gloss barathane on every piece and I've also purchased a couple of items to tie everything together. And I mean that literally because what I've done is I've picked up some of this 1 8 inch leather lacing as well I've picked up some metal beads and I've made sure that the inside or the hole of the bead is going to be big enough to house a double layer of the lacing. So how does this all come together? Let's head to the bench and we'll go through it and hopefully it'll work out. Well, you're going to need a few things in order to assemble this project and I have a sharp knife. I've put all my beads in a little container just to keep them corralled there and I have a board that I have drawn a line at two and a half inches in from the end. I also have a couple of these dental picks that I use when I am tuning up my fretwork on the scroll saw, and these are gonna help when we lace these together. So what you need to do is you need to cut off a length of your suede or leather lacing that is two and a half inches long. So I have a line here, it's very easy to cut this stuff. I prefer to cut it with a sharp knife as opposed to scissors. And you can just push down like that and cut it off. So how do you lace these together? It's tedious. It's a pain in the butt. I'm hoping it's going to work, but let's have a look at that. I'm going to do my best to not get in the way of the camera, but it's extremely difficult. 
What I have here is a couple pieces of the original material that I made these squares out of and I've cut it to half an inch wide by one inch long. And that's just spacers to help keep these things in line while we're working on the lacing of them. So the first thing you want to do is take your two and a half inch piece of your leather lacing, place a bead over top of it in the center. Once you get it centered on your lace, we're going to bring it up through the bottom hole or the, the bottom surface of two of our pieces. Now just remember to check these for alignment that the grain is the way you want them because once you get them laced together, that's it, you're done. So we'll get these pieces of lace into these holes. You can already see that I'm having issues and that's because my fat fingers don't want to work today. There we go. Once you get that through, you're going to place your spacers just like that. And we're going to make sure that our lacing is in fact centered, that we have equal amounts of the lacing on either side. You can see there we meet pretty much in the middle, a little more on this, and there we go. So once you get that lined up like that, what I'm going to do, or what you're going to want to do, is clamp it in place. Now you don't want to put too much clamping pressure because if you do, this whole thing's going to pop up on you and you don't want that. So get them aligned as best you can. Double check for center here. And I think we're pretty good. And we'll get, get our dental picks here and get them ready. And what we've got to do, <laughs> and I'm not looking forward to this. This is going to be a disaster. But you need to take a little bit of CA glue. You don't need a lot. We're going to place it there on that one piece of leather. And then using a dental pick now, we're going to fold this over as carefully as we can and put it down inside this bead. Maybe. Just like that. There we go. And then once you get that in place, and hopefully it'll set up, <clears throat> we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. So we'll just get a little drop of CA on here. You don't need a lot. There we go. I'm trying my best not to get it on the wood. Uh, I'm not succeeding very well. And once again, poke it in place with the dental picks to get it inside the bead and secure it in there. And once you're happy with the placement of that and that it's laced together properly, just hold it until it sets up and then you can move on to the next set of holes. Okay, so it would appear that using two tools to maneuver this short piece of leather lacing is the way to go. That last one went in really smoothly with no issues whatsoever. So let's see if I can do that again. And if I can, then that's obviously the method that we need to use. Well, that's three done, and there's a lot more to do. I don't think we need a full video. You guys get the gist of it. So, you know what? Let's do it as a time lapse so that you can see this whole thing come together.
there you have it. A maple table runner. Guys, this project is a heck of a lot of fun. It doesn't use much material, but it gives you the opportunity to get rid of some scrap. Now, sure, I had to buy some leather lacing and the uh, metal beads, and in fact, I had to go out halfway through putting this thing together to buy more beads because I miscalculated. But honestly, it takes next to no material. Um, the, the beads that it takes are fairly cheap. I got them on sale at 50% off. So all in all, this entire project is probably in the neighborhood of about $12 is what it cost me to make. That's not bad for a wooden custom table runner. And you know what? Time well spent. And for 12 bucks, where can you get that much fun for that much time? Guys, I didn't expect this thing to be as time consuming as what it was. So if you're in a hurry to throw this thing together, don't bother. Take your time when you're assembling it. Light clamp pressure with your spacers in between. And you're not limited to metal beads. I mean, Mix it up if you want, wooden beads, uh, clay beads, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be the leather lacing. It could be twine, it could be rope, it could be whatever you like. It could be metal S-hooks. Guys, you're not limited to what I've done here on the show. I've only provided you with the idea and it's up to you to take it to that next level. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss the notifications of future programs. I really hope you've enjoyed this program, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the project. I hope you're going to try it yourself. I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week, and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.